Hello everyone, I hope you are well. We are now into May 2021 and here in the UK where it should be nice and warm by now, it is still jolly cold. There's a howling gale outside and well, hopefully <laughs> summer will come soon. Right, anyway, next up is a beautiful, beautiful wine glass. Now this and uh, several other glasses of the same shape were very kindly gifted to me by Suzanne Oswald. She is a very talented engraver in the States and uh, she mainly works with sandblasting and uh, she couldn't use these and because well they are very fine actually actually not as fine as they look well, there's quite a bit of thickness there um, lovely sound, you know I love a good old ring. Uh, these are a lovely crystal and they are called Seneca crystal. I have never heard of them. There you go, you can see there, Seneca crystal. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I am going to be working around the base, which you also know I enjoy and probably some sort of floral design. I haven't decided if I'm going to add anything other than that, but I have chosen this shape of glass simply because I want to be able to get the drill inside. And you can get the drill in inside quite easily. Exciting. Uh, I know I did touch a little bit on uh, engraving, I think on where, where I was carving, was it? Yes, I was carving a glass on the previous video and we engraved a little, a few of the leaves inside. But this time I want to do it round the bottom and it may be part of the element, say, within the flower or something like that, or it may be uh, part of the decoration behind the flowers. I, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But I think that would be rather fun. Probably not a glass that you would end up drinking out of because of the engraving on the inside. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe people would drink out of it. But I think something like this, you're more likely to put it on display anyway. You don't really want to have uh, wine going into the engraving. Uh, it should wash out fine though, except a red wine possibly. Who knows? Not really sure. But we're going to do this anyway. We are the artists. This is our canvas and it's a beautiful, beautiful 3D canvas. Play with it. So I would like to thank Suzanne very much for her beautiful glasses and let's get on and create a little masterpiece out of this stunning little glass. So elegant, very tactile. Right, I hope you enjoy. Let's get on with it. So here we have uh, the very simple drawing sketched out. What I have done is I have used a non-permanent marker on the upper surface, the outer surface of the glass, and a white crayon, just for the contrast, on the inside of the glass. I have got a small green stone, just for something different. You will find in this video I have used different techniques to what I have normally shown you guys and um, um, the first thing of course I am just roughly mapping in what I have sketched onto the glass. This little design goes all the way around the base. Even though the base is obviously thicker than the rim it is still not very very thick and it is quite a delicate glass so I will not be going deep into this engraving. We're going to get all the effects we want just by surface engraving and shading and working on the inside as well for a touch of 3D. 
Now that I have outlined everything, I've taken the white background away so that you can see what I've done. Obviously, I needed it for the red pen. I realized, obviously, <laughs> an awful lot of dust coming off. And even though I had my mask, just using a stone, uh, it, it was creating a lot of dust. So on went my dust extractor, which lucky for you, you can't actually hear. So unlike my usual style, where I normally work outwards in the way that the maybe the veins um, or the movement of the, the leaf would, I am literally just blocking in the shading, just an area of glass. Basically, I'm, I'm breaking the surface of the glass and we can do all sorts with it, whatever we want with it. I am not pressing very hard at all. I am working dry and will be working dry probably 90% of the time we work on this glass. I've left a little line down the middle just roughly mapping out um, the middle of the leaf. Very lightly. I'm trying to get an even tone. A smooth, even tone. This little green stone has got a rounded top to it. So if you happen to have a green stone that has got a flat top to it, just round the edges, just grind them down against another diamond or stone. Uh, to create a rounded effect. It doesn't have to be as small as this one. Uh, I just, in fact, I think this one is quite, quite worn down, to be honest. It started its life um, bigger than this. Now, the beginnings of the inside of the glass. I did find that this was quite a tricky exercise because obviously I wanted to show you as much as possible. It's, that's part of the theme of this video. But boy oh boy was it difficult to get it in the at the right angle so that you could see what was going on and keep my head out the way and try and create a neat bit of engraving uh, while being quite awkward. So in actual fact, later on, I do take it aside, turn the video off and neaten up the inside by working at a more comfortable angle, which I could not possibly film. But you can get the general idea. You will be seeing quite a lot of the internal engraving anyway. It just is incredibly difficult to make it neat at that angle. So basically, I am doing what I have done on the outside. I'm just smoothing out an area. Now, you can see it looking a little bit tatty. Um, what you can see that is white is just the crayon, and which I am wiping off with my finger a little bit. So don't worry about uh, um, the outline edges. That was just me very... Um, scruffily uh, mapping it in. I haven't, wi I haven't wiped that one out. You can see it on the inside. Right, so now I've taken a very small diamond and I am starting to just give it a, a slightly more textured edge. You can use a variety of burrs, as long as it's uh, a small burr, you can use a rat's tail for this. I 
I do end up going over this uh, several times as I create the, the neater sort of edge. Because I also want to blend it into the middle area anyway. You don't want a stark outline. Um, but at the same time, I just want it to look slightly sharp. As per normal, I have sped up this film. I think it's at about 130%. Of normal speed. I would suggest that when you are engraving, take your time. It isn't my nature as usual <laughs> because of the pressures of my business, you know, business in general. I work fast all the time. Um, and I try and slow down for the purposes of teaching you guys, <laughs> but I still find myself working quite fast. And then I, I have to speed it up anyway, uh, because otherwise um, <laughs> my videos would be far too long. And then, of course, I speed up the actual video itself. Otherwise, you'd quite frankly get bored, I think. Anyway, let's get back to it. Slowly working... Um, with the leaves, uh, here I have got a very old rat's tail and I am flattening the top to get down to some fresh diamond. Just using that a little bit along the uh, edge of the leaf. Now this is interesting because I try and use it on the inside of the glass. Again, as I say, I'm trying ever so hard not to get my head in the way. I do get my head in the way quite a bit, but don't worry, I have edited that out. Now, I suddenly got this, this idea because I was battling to reach it. So I dug out the very, very long, skinny, skinny carving burr. So obviously this is for uh, carving into the edge or into the rim or in the middle of a glass if you like um, and sort of sawing backwards and forwards. But uh, here obviously I'm using the tip of it, making use of the length, this huge long burr and having just had root canal <laughs> treatment on my back molar um, tooth to be honest, that looks very familiar with one of the burrs that the dentist shoved into his drill and brought into my mouth is actually quite hair-raising <laughs> because it had to obviously get down to the very, very end of the root. And so, yes, it did look something like that. So... It's actually quite, I, I, I thought this was quite interesting and rather fun using it in the inside of the glass. It was ever so slightly wobbly. It was really interesting. Uh, it wasn't as straight and steady as it should have been for the very tip of it. Uh, you can probably pick it up by looking at the film. But it still worked okay for what I w quickly wanted to, to achieve. Now, this is one of the things, a lot of the, the action, where I really wanted to go sideways, I was having to pull towards me in that and at that awkward angle. So it did make life a little bit difficult for me. But you will find it way easier because you will not necessarily be filming yourself. And so therefore, you will be able to get into a far more comfortable position. And all you have to do is just keep maneuvering, just make sure... You know, move it around, um, change angles until you are most comfortable uh, with the inside of the glass. You can see how this shape really helps, um, you know, getting into the middle of it because it is slightly flared outwards. And it wasn't too bad, actually. So doing a little bit more of this action... 
seem to be spending quite a long time on the edges of these leaves. This time with a little diamond. I, th I don't know, I certainly wasn't too happy with how they were looking before. You just keep going and over and over and over. Because we are not going deep, uh, there's plenty of, of room for maneuvering and um, changing. It's very shallow work. You can see how that leaf on the inside is so bright. It's amazing. Uh, and this is often the case when you are working on the inside of the glass, looking through the glass, it, it does look brighter. So turning the glass and getting comfortable again, still working on the outer leaf here. Just getting it prepared satisfactorily. Is that a word? Satisfactory. <laughs> right, here I have something different. I, I was having fun using burrs that I don't often use, actually. This is a brown stone. And I'm just going over it again. I thought maybe it would bring it up slightly brighter. And just smoothing and smoothing and just going over. Over all the engraving, including down the middle but you'll still be able to see the middle line. You can see how I'm turning the glass all the time as well. I haven't got it stuck in the glass holder. I'm moving it around and um, it's perfectly right. When you're working on the surface like this, it's, it's just, it's light work. And you can do it quite easily just holding it in your hand. It's just leaning on the bottom, obviously. And then, <laughs> really funny, I don't know why I was doing this, but I just thought, all right, while I'm on a roll, I grabbed a pink stone. So I haven't used the pink stone for a long time, that I can remember anyway. It's, it's just something different, uh, probably slightly brighter again, slightly harder, and I'm just running it over. I quite often used to use the pink and the brown stones when I was doing hair getting some hair effects because it is almost like a sort of salt and peppery kind of um, effect parts of it are dull and parts of it are slightly brighter uh, so almost speckles sometimes and if you want to change the behavior of the stone run it against another stone um, I almost got my head in the way again <laughs> Just flicking up with a tiny little diamond here, just flicking up and getting some 
sharper points. Now to the inside of the glass to tighten up the edges once again. Now one thing I did notice and I thought I would point it out. As you finish engraving on the inside, I don't know what I was pointing at there, but anyway. As you finish engraving on the inside, I turn off the burr and pull it out straight. I don't pull it out while it's uh, still spinning I just am very careful uh, because I tend to be working quite fast it's very easy to slip and make, and catch the edge and maybe make a nasty mark on your on your way out of the inside of the glass and the other thing is the fact that um, there's a lot of dust you're creating dust so normally now you can see I'm using my finger there normally you would just wipe it away with your finger. You've still got the drill in your hand spinning away and you just wipe it away. But you cannot do that on the inside because then the point of the burr is going to go wayward and hit the side of the glass somewhere. And then all of a sudden you'll have to be <laughs> adding some more foliage to cover it up. So um, you've got to be very careful to switch it off, put the drill down on its holder and then go back in and wipe all the dust out the middle of the glass. The other reason why I'm working dry of course is to is because getting all these angles right so that you can see what I'm doing um, and dripping water into the glass well <laughs> I think that would have been a bit of a mission. Here by the way um, I have got a very tiny diamond wheel and I'm using the edge of it and running along the leaf, the leaves uh, creating the sort of veiny effects. Doing that on the inside is a challenge, <laughs> as you can imagine. Here I have got a soft rubber wheel and I'm just running it off the middle, up the middle and I'm kind of just starting to create some effects. I think I went over that all again and just blended it a little bit more with stones. Um, I was in a bit of a hurry. I was trying to see what the effect was going to be. Often with the leaves, the most effective way, like we've already, always done, is up the middle one side and on the other side, pulling it in from the edge. So you've got the shading in the middle on the one side and on the outside um, uh, coming in on the opposite edge of the leaf. Now, obviously, you can use um, a bullet shape. I mean, I just happen to have this shape. Um, it actually works better with a new new uh, soft rubber disc. You get the really thin ones with the floppy edges. They, they behave quite nicely for this because you can um, sort of flop it on there. This is a little bit hard. You'll see how I blend it um, anyway. But you can use a bullet shape. You can just use the rubber in your hand if you like. Here I decided to experiment and I thought, do I play with the highlight of the leaf by putting something on the inside to make it even brighter? So I took my pencil and I ran it on the inside and I looked at it and I thought, mm, ee, ee, nah. <laughs> I decided not to do that. It's funny, you know, I just thought, Maybe because it's bright, maybe it'll it'll create this real brightness. But it it kind of if it had been a solid 
bit of engraving and not a half tone engraving, it would have probably looked all right. It would have looked brighter. But the fact that I, w I didn't want, to, uh, how can I explain? I, I didn't want it to be a, a solid color on the top. It just looked silly. So um, anyway, yeah, I've, I've averagely successfully filled in some veins on the inside, but I do need to nose up later, as I mentioned before. Very difficult to get these angles. Um, just getting these little corners in. I think because, as you can see, I'm pulling towards you. <laughs> towards you? Towards me. And as I've always said, you know, when you, you know, to get neat little flicks, um, flicking sideways or away is, is much easier. Now, I've got a bullet rubber here and I'm roughly um, adding some shading similar to what I've done on the top. Um, now you will see that I started off by uh, shading pretty heavily the parts of the leaf that are behind the outer leaf, the leaf on the outside, because I don't want them to show through. And uh, but I do want them to disappear behind the leaf. So here I'm doing the same with this leaf and I'm really polishing away that part of the leaf, which is going to be behind the petal. The petal is going to be quite bright anyway, so we shouldn't be able to see it. Um, I possibly should have been a little bit more careful with the leaf because the the upper leaf is going to be darker. So, of course, it, it's anything overlapping may show through. But you want it to disappear under me, underneath. You don't want to have that gap. You don't want to have to look slightly sideways and see a clear glass gap. You want to see the leaf going underneath it. And, of course, it's not that thick. So there's not going to be a huge gap in between, but there is a little gap, probably a uh, couple of mil, three mil. Yeah, I have decided, uh, excuse about, excuse the angle as well. Um, that's because my head basically was in the way and I've tried to zoom in and bring it down. But basically I've got that original green stone and I'm um, just playing with the edges again which is what I should have done earlier on. And just blending the brightness of the edges in towards the leaf. Now you can see that inside leaf, it looks really tatty at the moment. Really, really tatty. And I do completely redo that um, inside leaf along with the other ones sort of off the camera because they look quite hairy at the moment <laughs> but basically as I say you've got to get yourself comfortable and I can't film and be comfortable on the inside now in the drill I have got a relatively large diamond burr and I am dragging it from the brighter sharp edges in towards the middle towards the stone I'm not leaving the stony area where it's dark I'm just flicking it inwards and then that can be easily blended as well which I will show you in a moment Uh, right here I have got um, a grey rubber in my hands, as you can see in my fingers, and I'm just blending the levels of, of shading that were looking a little bit stark. Yeah, you could see the little lines. It is very effective on stonework. It will, honestly, it will just softly shade it. I love doing this. I'll use, definitely use this method when I'm, I'm doing skins on faces. And, as you can see, that is the end of that, part one, already. 
Thanks for watching, guys, and soon up will be part two. Cheers for now.